So I, I had a great experience. I've had a great week. How many ever have a great week? You know, this everything goes good. Amen. And I'm sorry, but I'm excited because I've had one of those weeks, and I thought to myself, I better chill out a little bit. You know, I need to like calm down, and just teach this, and you know, be like Richard up here. You know, be a real. You know, teach you the word and have you understand it and, and all that. So I thought, well, I'm just, I, it's going to pour out of me. I knew I was sitting in my office going, God, don't let it just pour out of me. And here I am just pouring out on you guys. So bear with me because I'm just excited about what God is doing in my life, okay? And hopefully uh, we'll get, you, you'll catch some of this, amen? But I was, uh, this week I was sitting in the Veterans Administration office because I, uh, I was going to, uh, I'm getting reevaluated for some stuff uh, medically that's wrong with me. And uh, I have a lot of things wrong with me, but anyway, um, so I was going through the paperwork, and the young lady that was there that was doing the paperwork was a veteran from, from Afghanistan, and she was telling about her story, how she was in Afghanistan, and she was in Iraq, and she was uh, part of a weapon system that was new, and she was teaching uh, these different units. And as I was sitting there sharing with her, she told me that she, uh, well, of course on my paperwork it says that, you know, I don't want to tell people that I'm a pastor when I first show up, you know, I just want to just be a person, you know, and just share with them about Jesus. And then all of a sudden when you say you're a pastor, all of a sudden the conversations change. And as we're talking about her new marriage, she just got married and she was sharing about that, and how exciting it was. I was telling her about my son got married and how great that was. And we had this conversation. Also, she read that I was on my paperwork that I, my occupation was a pastor and the conversation changed. I'm like, oh Lord, you know, that's not fair. You know, I really just wanted to go bring this conversation around to Jesus, but you know, obviously we're getting there a little quicker than I thought we should. And anyway, but the God, but God knows, does he not know? In every situation, because he knows your heart. I wanted to share Jesus with them. I want them to come to, oh, everybody I meet, I want them to come to the revelation that Jesus Christ is the only way to eternal life. That God can forgive their sins and heal their marriages and do all those wonderful things. And I just want to share that every time I go someplace. And it was, it was the same, I was sitting there that, in that office. And she began to share about her marriage. She said, yeah, I'm a pastor. And I said, I told her, oh, I just love counseling with married people. And I just, me and my wife do that. We do that with pastors. We do it with people in the church. But I just love when people, you know, that are married are struggling. And we are able to see Jesus heal that. And I just love that, uh, that time. And we just were talking about that. And, and the Holy Spirit, of course, was leading me to go in that direction. And so she started sharing about her husband and how his, his family is you know, one way, and she's not that way, and, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I told her that, you know, the, the Bible does say that the man should leave their mother and father and cleave to his wife, and, and she goes, uh, I never heard that before, and I said, well, that's what it says, and I said that the man would leave his mother and father and cling to his wife, then he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have the problems that you're dealing with today, because you would be the center of his life, and she lit up and thought that was really cool, you know, and I said, I went on a little further, I said, you know, it doesn't say that the woman should leave her mother and father, because it's natural for the woman to want to take care of the husband and do these wonderful things. I shared Ephesians and I went through all that stuff and, you know, as, I, as she was getting, asking more and more questions and, you know, I started answering those questions and it's a small office and I didn't know that, but then one of the co-workers came in and started listening and then another co-worker came in the office and started listening and pretty soon I had three of them in the office and they were asking me questions and, you know, what church do you go to, blah, 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 you know, and I said, well, it's not really, but um, one of the questions was, uh, uh, what denomination are you? And I said, it doesn't matter. Does it really matter? I said, because the words I spoke gave you excitement in life. I said, does it really matter what church I belong to? Oh, they stopped and they was silent like this. And it's like, oh, you're right. It really doesn't matter. I said, the word of God is truth. So that's what you need to do. You need to get your, you have a Bible. He goes, yes, I have a Bible. I said, oh, I said, good, go home, dust it off, open it up, and begin to read. Because the in the word of God is life. Amen. And it was just an exciting time. I just love it. I know God is doing something in the spirit. But I can't do that on my own. I only can do it by the spirit of God. Because my wisdom is nothing. It's the wisdom of God that gives us power to talk life into people. Life. Amen? Amen. That's what we have to realize. It's the Spirit of God. So today, the beginning of the title of my sermon is this. Yeah, we need a, we, we need a, there's an update available. Amen? There's an update, an upgrade available for us in the Holy Spirit. We need to know the Spirit of God is in our life, and He wants to upgrade in our lives His, His revelation of who He <laughs> is so we can walk in His Spirit every day and not just try to get His Spirit, if you will, on Sunday morning. Oh, pour out your spirit on me, Lord. 
And God said, like, I already did. You have all that you need. Just use it. Now, that's a lot different from my old thinking. Because I was like, oh, Holy Spirit, come. Holy, how are you going to sing that song, right? Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. What you're really saying is, oh, Lord, let my flesh be, be uh, uh, subject to your spirit I, so I can obey you. Is really what you're saying. Amen. Let me re let me not walk in the flesh so I can do the things I want to do, but let me walk in the spirit so I can be like you. Amen. That's pretty good. Huh? I should be on the worship team. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. We should. That's what it is. Is is the spirit? Is it how do you, how do you have the fruit of the spirit? What is your plumb line or truth? That if you're walking in the spirit, do you walk in love? No. Evaluate yourself today. Don't let me evaluate you. But let, love, joy, peace, and patience. I mean, come on, all the go, turn to Galatians and turn to and, 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 and Galatians five and and read it. it. It's the fruit of these are the things that you should have in your life if we walk in the spirit. The spirit of God is in us, Holy Church. If the spirit of God is in us, then hatred and deceit and unforgiveness and Pain and suffering and confusion and doubt and fear is not part of your life. Now I believe this. We go back to the beginning. When I sat in that, uh, when I sat down that, in, that, in that place in the jail, where I that, I said to Jesus, "I believe you're real. Forgive me for what I did wrong and come into my life." At that moment, the Spirit of God was deposited in me. I had no clue what that meant. I didn't even know what a Christian was. I knew what a Catholic was, because that's where my mom and my grandma took me when I was little. But I didn't know what a Christian was. I didn't know what a believer was. But I'm telling you, I'm a different person than I was when the Spirit was deposited in me then than I am now. Amen. 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 And like Paul says, I have to, this, this verse, I cannot get away from this. Look at your ear, uh, and did you read uh, Galatians 5.22? Did you want to read that? Can you read that? The gifts of the Holy Spirit? Are you reading it in the regular Bible? No. Okay. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, <coughs> joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, Self-control against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. All right. So the, the Holy Spirit is more than just uh, those, those things need to be in our life. So after today, when you, after you're done watching a football game, go back and read that and evaluate yourself and say, am I walking in these things? Because if you are walking in those things, then the Spirit of God is in you. Amen. And we'll talk about in the next couple of weeks about prophecy and talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and all those things that we want to see operating in our lives that are on a regular basis. But I'm telling you, just to give you a heads up, a lot of those things are in your life already. You just got to use them. Amen. And a lot of it's not for just Sunday morning or Wednesday night. A lot of that is for you to use outside the four walls so you can draw, help people be drawn to the kingdom of God. Amen. Have you ever shared with somebody or and while you're sharing with them about the kingdom of God, about Jesus' love, and all of a sudden God gives you uh, uh, knowledge about that person? Am I the only one or is it, do you know what I'm talking about? And all of a sudden you'll be able to speak to that and they, and they go, how did you know that? I said, I don't know, but the Spirit of God told me. It's not my wisdom, but God's wisdom. Because God loves you, and He wants you to know He knows everything about your life, and He loves you anyway. Come on, come on. He loves us anyway. And no matter what we do wrong and how we disobey or whatever, as believers, He loves the unbeliever just as much as He loves you. The one thing that a young lady wanted to say, she said, "Pastor," she says to me, "Now I'm pastor instead of just Bob in the in the office." So that really brings up another notch on the authority figure in the room. God loves everybody, doesn't he? Yes. I said, yes, he does. And she was getting loud like I am, so I could do the same thing. You know, she said, does God, God does love everybody. And I said, yes. And you know, my next reaction was, but he hates sin, right? That's what I was going to say. That's what I did. 
Because I didn't think it was right. Because that's not the point. She, she wanted to know, does God really love everybody? And in her mind, she had all those sins and all those things and all the people that reject God. She was, And she had a list of them. And we sh I want to share that with you right now. But she knew. And I, I said, yes. And no matter who or what they've done. I said, no matter what they've done, God still loves you. God's love is unconditional. That's why he sent Jesus to die for us, right? And that's the message we have to share by his spirit, right? So I want to share, I'll look at verse, this, uh, go back to 1 Corinthians um, chapter 2 and end of verse 4. But by the demonstration of the spirit's power, so your faith might not, might not re, uh, rest on man's wisdom, but God's wisdom. So God, the Holy Spirit is not, if you will, an app, but God's Holy Spirit is an operating system. He operates in us continuously. It's not an app that you just say, okay, today I'm going to use this app. Or today I'm going to use this uh, tool, as some try to refer to the Holy Spirit to. He's not a, a tool. He's not an app. He's an operating system that's in your life and he's continuously flowing through you if you allow him to. Amen? The Holy Spirit wants to be part of your life, and He wants to be in you. The main purpose of the Holy Spirit is uh, not that you can, that I can preach good to you, but the whole, the main purpose is that the Holy Spirit is in your life and, and and wants to operate through you. The question is, do you need more of the Holy Spirit? How much of the Holy Spirit has of your life? Does He have your life? How much of it <laughs> will you allow Him to use? Will you just let him use you on occasion? Well, it's, I'm, my duty, I, I'm on church on Sunday morning, so I'm used to the Holy Ghost then. Or you can allow him to operate through your life continuously. That's the question we'll get to at the end of the service. I'm kind of getting there a little early, but that's okay. I'm kind of give you a prelude, this is what we're going to talk about. No, I don't want the I just don't want part of the Holy Spirit. I want all. And you know what's cool about this? God will give you all. He's not limiting. Okay, you just get a little bit, Tina. You Gail, you get a little bit. Every you get just a little bit. No, you get it all. Amen. All His power in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. What would it be like if believers, Christians, could say we're operating, we're going to walk in the fullness, and then we have a demonstration of the Holy Spirit's power? Would you just think about that for a moment? What does that mean to have a demonstration of the Holy Spirit's power in your life? Is it good preaching? Is it using those other gifts? Maybe it's laying on your hands? <coughs> what is it? The demo, Paul said, I'm not going to come just by my preaching. I'm coming by the demonstration of God's power. What happened? Demons left. People were healed. Amen? This was normal. See, it's not weird to walk in the Spirit of God. The Spirit is not weird. He might be unpredictable. He might uh, do things that would be a little different in your life. Like, okay, I'm going to work, but the Holy Spirit tells me to stop at this gas station, but I don't need gas. But you feel the Spirit telling you to stop. What's going to happen? Nothing but good's going to happen. Amen? Nothing but good. I'm going to tell, uh, tell on my daughter, Amy. Is she here? Uh, she's in the back with the babies, I think. Amy, this week, now, uh, this is... This is God, okay? This is like sometimes you have to operate and, and, and listen to the Holy Spirit, but some, you don't know that that's the Holy Spirit telling you to do something. So maybe you have to check with somebody. That's what she did. We got a phone call, a text message. Hey, Dad, there's this lady standing by this bus stop with this little boy. She was here this morning when I left work, and now she's here at 9 o'clock at night. I think she's homeless. What do you think I should do? I said, well, you know, I mean, a dad, you know, I want to tell her exactly what to do, right? I'm saying, well, what do you think you should do? Uh, I think I should go help her. I said, good, because that's the Holy Spirit telling you to do that. So listen to that voice. Then I said, is Jesus with you? I mean, I want to make sure I help you with her. You know, and I went, you know, you have to be cautious a little bit. Uh, but she did. She helped this lady, and we, you know, and got her some food, got her in her room, you know, and we got uh, some follow-up information for her so she can get some temporary house. You know, it's just one of those things. But that, isn't that how the Holy Spirit works sometimes? Just the small unctioning, if you will, <laughs> or that small like <clears throat> maybe something outside your thinking, little radical that you would normally wouldn't do. Maybe interrupt your schedule for the day 
Amen? So that's how the Holy Spirit works. He's not going to force you to do it. He's going to allow you to do it. Amen? And the glory goes to who? Because all of a sudden, now you're demonstrating the love of God in this world. Nobody else would help. How many people walked past that lady that day? Thousands. How many Christians drove by that lady? How many times did the Holy Spirit prompt somebody to stop to help her? Nobody. Finally, one person did. I think God wants to do that more and more and more in our lives. Amen? Come on. You all look like now there's a burden for you to carry. No, it's not a burden. It's the joy of demonstrating the love of God in this world today, right now. That's what the local church should be all about. Amen? Don't say, well, don't shout me down when I'm preaching good today. I tell you, I think it's really good. But anyway, Lord, I want to give you more than, okay, point number two. Holy Spirit produces humility, not arrogance. So in the old Pentecost, in the old days, you know, it was like everybody had this class, you know, those that spoke in tongues, those that didn't, those that use operate in the Spirit, and I'll talk about all that a little bit more. But it's not true. When the Spirit of God is in you, we want to, we have this, we put on this clothing of, you will, this mantle of servanthood and love and compassion. It doesn't puff us up. Do you remember the story when Jesus washed the disciples' feet right before he went to heaven? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And he was demonstrating, he put a towel around him, he washed her feet, and, you know, Peter said, no, don't wash my feet, you know, wash my whole body now, you know, he's, a little crazy Peter, you know, love Peter. But he missed a point. The point was that he's watching the point that they were going to be servants. And they were going to be martyrs for God. So Jesus said, I can't. It's a humble position to take the position of the slave that actually washed the feet of the people that would come to be guests at the house in their tradition. So Jesus is saying, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Richard, I'm going to pour that in you, and you're going to be my servants. And you're going to be such a great servant that people are going to come to Jesus. <coughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? I'm going to become a servant so, so humble, so not puffed up. I'm, you know, that's the problem. With, that's why we have such division in churches today, right? Everybody's trying to be better than everybody else. But you know what? It's humble to say, I, like last week, I was thinking about Pastor Jorge and Pastor Kim as we met a few weeks before last week's service. How many were here last week for the service, right? Wonderful, right? There's about, I don't know, 100 people here, 90 people here in service last Sunday. It was wonderful. And it was, it was just a, a, as we got together, Pastor Jorge, wonderful man of God, Okay, Pastor, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I don't know, what do you want to do? And, and Pastor Kim, like, I don't know, whatever, I'll do whatever you guys want me to do. And he's preaching though, so he knew what his responsibility was. And so we just <laughs> talked about the service, how we wanted things done, and, and uh, you know, eventually said, okay, I just kind of, uh, I, I guided the service, and then Pastor Jorge interpret. But the best part of the service, I thought, was uh, Pastor uh, Kim, Pastor. Um, not Kim, Pastor Jen's son leading worship, Daniel. And as he came up here, and you know, for them it was like they were excited because their service, their church service is like our size too. You know, they're small. All three of our churches are kind of small. When we come together, it's kind of exciting because there's more people. And he stood up and he goes, before he started led worship, he said, You know, I'm not here to uh, worship just the Korean God. And I'm not here to worship the uh, Spanish God, if you will. I'm not here to worship the American God, but we're just here to worship God. Oh, and just over it, there's just a humbling peace, the humbleness from him, just the peace that came over, and the worship, after the worship was just wonderful, amen? I just believe that was just, we're, we're humble, and God brings unity, and he doesn't bring division, amen? And that's when you know you're walking in the spirit, when you can bring unity to a situation and not bring division, amen? So a husband and wife arguing, right? We don't argue, so... 35 years this year, so we don't argue anymore. Um, but when um, when we are both in the spirit, that argument or situation doesn't last very long, does it? No, because we're we're humbling to we're serving one another, amen. And it's not who's right or wrong, but it's 
to bring unity to a situation. Amen? Boy, I could preach that at a marriage counseling center, huh? Would that change some, <coughs> some situations? Maybe. I don't know. But it does work because the Spirit of God is in it. Amen? Uh, the Holy Spirit, point number four, the Holy Spirit is, is wild and unpredictable, but he's not weird. Right? Now think about that. What, look, look at some of the stuff he did in the Old Testament. Hey, go strip down, lay in the middle of a circle, and, you know, I mean, come on. Or tell Ezekiel, go over to these dry bones, right? And speak to those dry bones, right? What happened? Ligaments and skin and everything came back to them and they were, they, they, uh, there was power, there was, there was, uh, uh, light that came to them. So I think that it might be the Holy Spirit might tell you to do something and if you're <clears throat> obedient to that and I look at that and say, well, I would, I would never done that. I think it's okay. I think it's okay that we do that. Amen? Look at the verse 6 and 8. It says, we do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. No, we speak God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden, and that the God, and that God, say that word. I'm not in the right position. for our glory. Destined. Destined for, for our glory. Because uh, time again, let me say it again. No, we speak God's secret wisdom and that God's disdain for our glory for, before, the, before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would, have crucif they would not have crucified the glory of God. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has, was conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by, what? What does verse 10 say? But he revealed it to us by his spirit. So what did God reveal to us by his spirit? His wisdom? His secret plan for mankind? Now that you are a believer, is it a secret any longer? What is the mystery that Paul writes about? What is the secret here? The secret is this, that God loved you and mankind so much that he sent his son to die for you and for me. And through his son and through his resurrection, we have the power to do what we're doing today through his spirit. We are forgiven of all our sins. Praise God for that. And when we fall, he still forgives us. Amen? It's by the blood of Jesus. Amen? That's the secret. The wise people of this day can't understand it. Go down to, to State Street and talk to some of those uh, doctors and all those people that have gotten uh, uh, two or three master's degrees in, in science and whatever and tell them that God loves them. It's like, I don't even want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They don't understand that. It goes right over their head until you can make friends with them and sit down and share how no matter what and how many troubles that they've been through or, or whatever they did wrong, God still loves you. And you know, it takes a messenger. It takes us going and sharing and loving and caring to bring them to the full knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's by His Spirit. It's like, well, I'm scared. I don't want to go down there. Well, yeah, in our flesh we're scared. It's not natural maybe to stand up and preach on Sunday morning or sit at a bus stop and talk to somebody about their life. But the Holy Spirit is going to use you if you allow yourself to do that. I mean, I tell, try to encourage people in our church on a regular basis. Listen, just be Christ wherever you are. Just be Christ in your workplace or when you're at the grocery store. You know, an act of kindness really goes a long way sometimes when you help somebody. They look at you really weird, like, why are you helping me? Or why are you letting me go in, in front of you in line when you were just waiting for this cashier who's the slowest cashier ever? But this lady has two kids and a, and a cart, and, you know, you just like, just go ahead and go, because I know she wants to get out of here, right? And they look at you like, why are you doing that? Or at Costco the other day, and it's like three three checkouts, and the line's 20 miles long, and you just say, hey, just go ahead. And they're like, everybody looks at you then, because it's really open there, you know? You don't have those 
things like the grocery store. Like, wow, that guy must be, that must be, he must be a pastor, I guess. <laughs> or he must be a Christian. No, they don't say that, it's just they see it, amen? I love doing that. It messes people up when you're nice to them. <laughs> <laughs> it does, so anyway. I have had the experience. Okay, now point number five. How many got on your on your smartphones you got this um, airplane mode? Right? You know what I'm airplane you know what airplane mode is? It's airplane mode is that you, you lose all signal from any outside source and all you can do is work on the apps and the things that you have on the hard drive of this computer, right? On this thing. You only can access that through your game. When you're in an airplane, you can play your games or, you know, you can read your e email that's already been downloaded. But when you turn on airplane mode, you have no more signals coming in. So take your phones down, put it on, take it off airplane mode. Amen? We need to take it off. We need to have our lives off airplane mode. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to continue to download into our lives His Spirit and His purpose and His direction. Amen? Sometimes we're just doing it. Hey, I got this, God. I can do it myself. But it ain't working. We're still depressed. We're still going through troubles. We're still not happy. Amen? I think there's a... Can you be happy through trials and tribulations? I mean, the Word of God tells us we're going to have trials and tribulations. Amen? Come on. Everybody say amen, right? Say to the person next to you, I have trials and I have tribulations. Amen? You're going to have them. You're going to have them. But, you know, can you have what, like, as a believer, can you have them? <coughs> can you, like, hey, even though I feel really mad and upset about the situation, I still know that God's in control. Right? Say, baby, let's just pray, because I, I, I don't know what to do right now. Can we just pray? Right? Rely on God. Let not turn off the, not be in the airplane mode and say, okay, I got this job. No. We have to, as believers, let the Spirit of God move through us and flow through us and anoint us to have His power in our lives. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's read the rest of this. Verse 10, is, or verse 10 says, The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For, he, for who among men knows the thoughts of man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the, the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of this world. Can you say amen? amen. You're not of this world. You have a different spirit in you, man. The Holy Spirit is in you, right? But the Spirit who is from God that we may understand what God has freely given us. Come on. The Spirit of God is in you, and you're going to know the things of God because He's revealed it to us, and He's given it freely to us, it says in the, in the NIV. This is what we speak, not in words taught of human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truth in spiritual words. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit. See, a man walking in the Spirit, before you were a believer, before you accepted Jesus as your Savior, you didn't understand the things of God. But now that you're, you accepted that, the Spirit of God is in you, and you can receive the things from God. That's what, see, there's no secrets from God. The, what is God thinking right now? It's the same thing the Holy Spirit is telling you. What is the Father's heart for the world? What's the Father's heart for my situation? The Spirit of God is going to reveal it to you. Amen? That's how they work. The Father, remember John uh, in John 17, Jesus prayed for us that we would know and be like the Father and the Son and the Spirit because they're one, that we be one with them. So God wants to reveal all His will to you. Come on, that's pretty heavy. God, the Father of Heaven, wants to reveal to you His will for every situation in your life. Just walk in it, amen? Receive that. Yes, God, I want to know your heartbeat. I want to know your will for my situation, for my family, for my children, amen? For the people I meet, for my church family. God, what is your will? Isn't that the big question sometimes? Mm -hmm. God is not keeping a secret to you and me. 
He wants you to know what it is. Now let's finish this up. It says, uh, verse 15, The spiritual man makes judgment about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. You have the mind of Christ. Well, how do I have the mind of God? How do I walk in the Spirit? How do I live in that every day? How many want to know that answer? How do I do this? How, how do I walk in the Spirit and know the Spirit of God is in me and, and, and helping me? How do, I, how do I get that? I'm going to tell you a couple things, all right? You can write these down. This is pretty important. I think you need to get this. If you get these couple things, your life will change immediately. And you'll be in tune to the Spirit of God. One, you have to desire to know God. Amen. You have to want to know Him. You have to say, I want to know Him. I want to hear Him. I want to hear His breath. I want to feel His presence. And I tell the story about Moses. God, I want to see you. And he says, hey, okay, 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 Moses. He finally said, all right. I want to put you in this little, in this rock over here, and I'm going to walk past you, all right, so you can at least see my back parts, right? I, I'll, when I was a new Christian, I prayed that every day. God, I want to see you. Okay, I can't see you face to face. Let me just see your back parts, God. Let me see you walking away from me, but I want to see you, God. Amen. I, every morning, I would get in my living room. We lived in a little trailer in Sneeds Ferry, North Carolina. I got up every morning, and I'd get in that, that chair, and I'd put my head in that chair, and I'd be kneeling down. I'd say, God, I want to know you. I want to demonstrate your power when I go to work today. I, wanna, I want those guys in the, on that base to know that you love them, God. And I'd cry out to God, and may I tell you one day, and I still, it's, it's, like, it's like it just happened yesterday. God showed up in that little trailer park in Sneeds Ferry, North Carolina. I was so freaked out, I jumped from the living room to my bed and jumped underneath the covers all at the same moment. Movement. It was just, it freaked me out so bad, being in the very presence of God. But I want to know Him. Well, our lives are so busy here. So busy. So Got to work, got to pay the bills, got to get stuff. Just got to take care of life. And all God's saying, would you stop for a little bit? And you want the power of the demonstration of the Holy Spirit in your life? <coughs> you have to do, you have to desire Him. One of the ways that He revealed Himself to us is through His Word. Through this book. Amen? You can read it on your iPhone or iPad or whatever you have, it doesn't really matter. Just get in a habit of opening this book up every day. And it'll change your life. And you'll see the Spirit of God wants to reveal Jesus in this book to you. He wants you to know the Father's love in this book too. So you have to have time of prayer. And remember, the disciples told us Jesus. Jesus, don't, Jesus, please teach us how to preach. Jesus, teach us how to lay hands on the sick. No, he, he, they asked Jesus, please teach me to pray. And Jesus said, this is how you pray. And the first thing he said, our Father, our Father, cry out to God the Father, because he loves you and he wants to reveal himself to you. And he did that through his Son and through his Spirit. So today, after we leave, <coughs> you say, well, that's a pretty good sermon, Pastor Priest. Yeah, I want to know the Spirit. I want to, I want to hear His voice. Because He's speaking to all of you. Every one of us, continuously. I, he, his purpose is to draw you into a deeper relationship with God. He's also there to help convict us when we sin. Come on. He's there. He'll say, oh, mm -mm -mm. I don't know how he does it to you, but that's how he does it to me. <laughs> right? Oh, he's getting upset too much. You need to calm that down a little bit. Chill out. Right? That's how he speaks. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. I love, I love when God speaks. 
speaks to me. I, I, I want to put, I hope I put a desire in your heart. I love that he is able to speak to everyone. He not just speaks to the pastor. He speaks to everyone continuously. And all we have to do is listen. He's there for you every day, every moment of your life. And when I was sharing with Joe, I said, oh man, that was the Spirit of God. Because I've just been studying this. I was like, I'm excited. So I got the phone call. And I felt like I shouldn't have got off the ladder. I'm like, that's the Holy Spirit. You should have listened. He's like, yeah, I know, but my foot hurts. You know, he's telling me. <laughs> and it was too late. But the point is that he knew then when I said it, he knew it instantly. That's what it was. That voice that sometimes <laughs> guides you and protects you and leads you. Amen. Let's stand together. Tina, would you come and, and play on the piano? When we're finished with prayer, I think um, uh, Rajiv's going to come and share some announcements and things. He'll, he'll close, officially close the service. But I want to pray for you today. Not only that you are more open to the Spirit of God in your life on a, on a daily basis, and starting from this moment forward, obviously I just love that you would, I would love to hear that, yeah, Pastor, man, I was doing this and the Holy Spirit, just email me, let me know uh, how that helped you this week. <coughs> man, uh, God loves you guys today. He loves you so much. He loves you. Just say, I love you, Lord. Tell him back that you love him this morning. Lord, I love you, Lord God. And so just say this with me. Would you say this with me? Say, Holy Spirit, open my spirit to hear your voice. Every day, Lord, become more real to me. Help me to hear your voice so I can do the will of the Father. That I may glorify Jesus in my life, in my community. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.